Well, welcome back into the Mid Norfolk Garden. We've got some beautiful spring sunshine here on this mid to late January afternoon. Just picking up these cyclamen flowers at the gate beautifully. Enough of them just to make a splash of colour. And we've got snowdrops really coming on now. Let's go and have a look at those. Plenty of buds showing on these. They're in shade. But if anything with snowdrops, that's quite normal. And with the darker backgrounds, they really do pick up contrast between the, the leaf mould. These are growing under a canopy of beech trees. So the gradually decaying dry brown beech with these white buds, it's absolutely spectacular. This little patch is even starting to open up in this sunshine this afternoon. Plenty more to come on and behind them the restart of the bluebells coming through. It should be several months later before we get the colour off those. So for now, just the snowdrops to enjoy. Well, I think our job for this afternoon is actually going to be starting to cut back some of the rows on this wall on the western aspect. Well, it's actually on the eastern aspect, but a western facing wall. Just starting to get the evening sun here but just look we've got a mass of self-seeded plants in the gravel which is starting to intrude quite a long way into the courtyard there's my skip which i'm not going to film i'll show you but what we do need to do with this wall is get these roses pruned now it's starting to come into their growth season and we really need to get that tidied up and not just on the wall but also where they have been allowed to almost run through this gravel and growth here. This is a mass of hollyhocks and all sorts of other self-seeded cottage annuals in here. We've got cicerinchiums. There's an awful lot of a creeper, which I'm not exactly certain the name of. It's almost like a, a creeping honeysuckle. It doesn't do an awful lot, that one. But also in the mass here, you just see these green growths coming up. You'd think these were spring bulbs, but they're actually a crocus that flowers here in autumn, a, a small yellow flower. I again don't know the variety, it's one that's been planted here for years. But really to get some light onto those by cutting back this vinca, this variegated vinca that's coming over them, is going to really benefit them. Get some light in, get these hollyhocks stems cut down from last year, and the whole of this mass, which just looks so messy now, just tidied up and thinned out because there is an awful lot of seed in here too much for any of it to really do any good and particularly with the hollyhocks what we're going to do is thin them back to give individual plants a decent amount of growing space so we actually get a decent crown and some flower from them so enough talking about it i'm going to get cracking with the snips start removing this a lot of the dead matter will go either onto the compost if it's woody too hard to compost then we'll put it into the uh, bonfire pieces and small amounts and see how we get on see what light we've got remaining and we have got the dogs out with us as you can hear now a lot of people when faced with a big mature rose like this look at it and think where to start and where do i cut and when something's as overgrown as this with a whole load of other things growing through it the first thing you've got to look is just straightforward sensible approach to get access to the stems that you're going to be able to tie back against the wall. Now down the base of this you'll see we've got some really thick well established and mature stems which have been allowed to come up and stay in place for probably about five or ten years and off those if you just see that lateral coming is a really good vigorous fresh stem that's coming sideways and those are what you want to try and conserve and tie back in but to get to them and to be able to tie them in, you've got to remove the vast majority of this overgrowth and anything that's damaged or diseased in any way needs cutting back. What we've also got problem-wise in this planting is a blackberry, self-seeded bramble coming up there. And again here, this great big stem that I've got in here is actually a, a bramble bush that's been growing here probably by the looks of it for a year or so. So that's got to come out and ideally get the root out, just cut these above the surface, they'll regrow. But when you are making a cut on a rose stem like this that's coming 
directly out and you can't tie it back without breaking it, then you are looking to cut back to a bud like this bud here. And the cut, when you come to it, should be just above it and slightly on an angle. So it seals off. You will get die back to the bud as it shoots away from there. Now, obviously, when I can get to it, this one is going to be cut back to a bud around an inch to an inch and a half from the base where it's emerging from the stem. And I can't even get there at the moment. So what I've got to do first is remove all this overgrowth from the top, all this bramble that's coming out of the top as well. And then when we've got all that out, we should be able to see some of the base structure of this rose and what we can get away with keeping for this year's flower and where we want it to grow away for next year's growth. Well, I've been going at this rose now for around 10 minutes and I've got a wheelbarrow full of what is mainly bramble to be honest. And if we come over to the rose bush you'll see now I've got access much more easily to it and it's starting to show where I need to cut back. Under all that bramble we've got all this dead wood. Look at this old stuff that's just dry and dead and this is your next job to get it all out everything like this which is brown cut back to where you've got some healthy growth like that so another 10 minutes removing all that dead wood and just leaving in my healthy frame anything that's died back here from a previous prune again back to green wood okay so that's your next step and then you'll see that what I've left in here, I've left a few longer growths, which are green, fresh stems from last year, which I'm wondering, I don't know yet, but I may be able to tie these back onto this framework. I haven't quite decided yet. But I won't know until I've got all this dead wood out, what's going to remain and what's going to stay. So that's the next stage in this prune. I'll see you back in a couple of minutes when I've achieved all that. Well, we're almost there now. You can see we've tidied this rose back with removing all the dead and diseased wood. But we've still got a way to go with this. And the next bit I'm going to show you is these spurs like this, which are last year's flowering spurs. They're going well above the height of the wall. And you'll see it's quite difficult at this time of year because you've got these beautiful buds that have emerged. Now, normally I'd say cut that back to just above the bud there. I don't know if that's going to be in focus, there you are. But obviously that's going to leave you quite a long and extended growth. And all the way down here you'll see there are smaller buds emerging from this branch. Now the temptation obviously is always to cut back to one of the biggest and most promising looking buds. But at this time of year this rose is going to have plenty of time to burst bud at a much lower level. So we're going to try and prune this into a, a fan spur network of little branches and cut back to around two buds above the break. And again, same on this one, two buds. Now you can see we're taking that back quite a long way. You're going to get less flower as a consequence to that and it's going to flower a little later as a consequence of that, but you are going to get a better quality, bigger bloom as a consequence of that. And also, again, I'm continuing to shape this rose. You'll see I've managed to pull the one next to it right the way down and back. This, I think, by pulling it down will mean that all the buds along the length of this growth will be encouraged to burst and will get a lot of flower as a consequence from that. Other ones which I was hoping to keep, like this one, are just sticking out far too much. And really, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to pull that back. In fact, with this whole flowering branch, you'll see how we've got a lovely network of spurs off this. But it is sticking out a little way. I'm certainly going to take anything that's coming straight at me right back. And then I think at that stage I'll decide whether I'm removing this branch completely and just reverting to... The laterals which are running behind it. It's going to make the rose much more easy to manage and look after this year, although it will reduce the flower. What is disappointing with this one is I haven't got any new growth spurs coming from the bottom and this is probably a consequence of me not having looked after it for a couple of years. The only one we've got coming out of this main stem here 
is that single new growth. Now if these main stems were to die this would be currently the only remaining bit of fresh growth keeping this rose alive. So by reducing the amount at the top of this plant I'm hoping this year that we'll actually encourage it to shoot from the rootstock and base and that by putting up fresh new stems from the base I'll get a chance to tie more in lower down along these old support wires and have it more as a trained fan shaped rose rather than everything happening at the top. So I'm going to continue on cutting this back till I'm happy with the basic shape and hopefully that will do it an awful lot of good. Great time to apply some slow release feed at the base of this but at first I've got to continue tidying up here. You'll see at the base of this one I've made a good start. You can see what we've uncovered. The flints along the front with the old edge really marking the boundary of the border. Everything's grown out, seeded and extended well beyond that by about two and a half metres. But just look at the lovely crop of spring bulbs that I was otherwise going to miss by doing this job at the right time and uncovering all these. So two benefits from the same job and hopefully some healthy climbing roses to enjoy. One last thing, I've still got a lot of spurs or branches which are crossing over and you can see the damage they do to one another where they rub. Look at the callus on the back of this. Here's another example where these are rubbing together. They do themselves no good by that. So where you can, decide which one you're going to keep and remove the other so that these aren't going to rub during the course of movement with weather during the year. That will again improve the health of the rose and reduce the risk of it getting disease later in the season. Thanks for watching.